There we go. Looks good to me. All right. <coughs> Where are we at? Let's see here. White bookmark. We just finished chapter four on Friday. And now we should be moving on to chapter five. Verse one, it says, Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. He also, also he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains, and the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about two thousand. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine, oh man, this keeps going. Those who fed the swine, they to uh, told of the city and the country, and they went out to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw that the one had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him and how he had been demon possessed and about the swine. They began to plead with him to depart from the region. And when he got in the boat, and oh, let's pause there. Let's just pause there. Whew. A lot of text taken one time. All right, so the story of the legion, the the demoniac uh, of the area of Gad. And so Gad occupied that side of the Galilee. Um, it, they were over there on the east side of the Galilee. And so they crossed over. And, and there they encounter this man. Now you find he's a demon-possessed man. Now, when we use that word demon-possessed, I've been reading lots of books on this lately. You know, people are talking about, you know, uh, demonazi or whatever, the, the Greek word for this. You know, the idea is that the person has been fully consumed by a demon. And in a sense, it's demon-possessed is the fact that the man possesses a demon. And so there are demons inside of him. And obviously there is a lot of demons inside of him. A legion. We're not talking about one, two, ten, or hundred. We're talking thousands plus. And so the idea here is that this guy is just very much demonically possessed. And, and he's being empowered by these demons to the point where he can break apart chains and shackles. And, and so here we see... Um, a very extreme case of demonic possession. And so this guy, you'll notice that uh, he's cutting himself with stones, crying out. So you see them tormenting this man and tormenting others through this man. And that's kind of what the demons are trying to do. It's worth noting that nowhere in the Bible, after the fall, do we see demons apart from, I mean, Satan was in a serpent. And then Satan, because he didn't have any other people to possess, did he? Satan was inside of a serpent. We see Satan with Jesus, but again, to what way did he manifest himself? It's hard to say, but we don't see them in human form like we do angels. So they take possession of humans. And, and so here, Jesus shows up, and it says he ran and worshipped him. Now, you know, we look at the beginning of the book of Job, and we see that the demons... The fallen angels, they are still there 
going before the throne of God and talking and conversing. And so it's this idea that, you know, they're fully aware of who Jesus is. And, and he comes down and what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high? And, and so here we have this demon talking through this man and Jesus tells him to come out. And fascinating, grammatically in verse 9, at least so I've read, you know, when Jesus is talking, he's talking in the singular. And you'll see actually from here forward, my name is Legion, we are many, he sends them out in the country. Jesus knew who he was talking to. I don't think Jesus needed to ask all of these demons what their names were. But it seems more likely that Jesus was asking the man what his name was. And I only throw that out because this is the only place in the Bible where we ever see someone trying to do an exorcism and they're asking for the name. And today we see people performing exorcisms and it's like they want to ask the demon the demon's name. And I don't see any benefit to getting in a conversation with a demon. In fact, knowing that Satan is the father of all lies and that the demons are all liars, why would you believe whatever it told you anyway? And so likely Jesus is not asking the demons for their names. He's asking the man for their, his name. He's trying to break past the demons and talk to the man and get a hold of the man. Now, I can't recall which gospel it is from. Um, he says in verse 7 to not torment him. And Matthew has this account, I believe, in Matthew 8. And maybe I'll flip back and see if it is in Matthew 8 because it's in Luke also. Um, and so let's see here. Oh, no, maybe it's not Matthew 8. What am I looking at here? No, 8, 28 to 30. 8.28. Yes, the demon-possessed men um, permit us to go into the swine. So here it says, have you come to torment us before the time? Okay. Now Luke 5. So you'll notice, have you come to torment? Torment us before the time. And then in Luke 5, where are we looking here? Luke 5 what? Luke 5 what? Um, Luke 5, 18, let's see here. Flipping, flipping. Aha, uh -huh. wait, it's forgiving a paralytic. Hmm, cleansing a leper. 12 apostles, beatitudes, building on the rock, centurion, behold the a messenger. Oh, there's the parables, feeding the 5,000. Well, maybe I don't know where it's at. Okay, well, someone will look up the Luke reference. But the important thing for us to know is that he says specifically in Matthew, do not torment us before the time. In Luke's gospel, he talks about do not send us to the abyss. It's fascinating. It's Tartarus in the Greek. I mean, the, the place, the location. And we see Peter referring to angels being held captive in Tartarus. Now, in the uh, Greek mythology, this was the keeping place of the Titans. And there's this interesting idea of these god men being held down here in captive. You know, Greek mythology is fascinating because as you study the Bible and angels and demons and the creation story and other accounts, you'll find that actually Greek mythology actually has echoes of the biblical stories in it. And so here this angel seems to know there's a time there's a set time where he will be judged. But he's asking, well, don't, don't kick me out before the time. He says, don't send me to the abyss, the Tartarus, this place, whichever ancient people used to say it, they say is as far as hell is below, beneath heaven, that is how far Tartarus is below hell, is the idea is this deep, faraway pit, but that there are demons being kept there currently. And that these demons don't want to go there. So they're like, hey, we know other guys are already being kept there. Don't cast us there. Let us go and just, we'll go inhabit the swine. Cast us into the pigs, why don't you? You know, we'll leave the human. Just 
don't send us to the abyss. And so Jesus permits. The, he goes into the swine. The swine run down the hill. If you get a chance, you can go to Israel. You can go to the Sea of Galilee. And there's really only one place where the swine could have jumped off at. So it kind of makes it easy to figure out where this is. There's no other real cliffs into the Galilee in that area. And there's a thousand and one deviled ham jokes I could make right now. And Swine Lake and everything else. But you've heard those all before. If not, go listen to like a John Corson sermon and he'll, he'll give you your fill. And so this is what happens. Now, now the man's healed and he comes to his right mind. And when the town people come, they see Jesus heal the man, but they want to kick Jesus out of the region. And the reality is, is these people were the swine herders. They were caught up in illegal trade. <laughs> And isn't it funny how when God delivers someone and God saves someone and they kind of go back to their people and their old friends that their friends don't want them because it's kind of like, well, you know, we like the way life was going for us before you got all Jesus-y on us. And I stopped before 18 because I, I just love Mark's account because only Mark does not have, only Mark has this last bit. When he got in the boat, he begged the demon possessed, and he, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. Later, right now, Jesus is getting kicked out of the Decapolis. Later, Jesus is going to feed the 4,000. And those 4,000 are people who come from the Decapolis to hear Jesus teach. Why? Well, there was only one missionary to the Decapolis at this point, and it was this man. You know, a few times I've had some kind of cool visions. Visions are like daydreams, right? Where all of a sudden you're kind of seeing something and whatnot. And I remember... Um, it's only okay for me. No one else should ever have visions during the church when the pastor's teaching. But that's what happened with me. And I remember sitting in church, Calvary Chapel, Cleelum, and having just this vivid dream, you know, as I'm sitting there listening to the sermon of, of Jesus. And he's leaving the farm. We're like on a farm setting. And I wanted to go with him. And he told me no. And I remember the initial disappointment. And that's why I love this story, because it reminds me of this vision, is that there's this disappointment. Like, no, you don't get to come with me and the disciples. And it's like, aw. But then he just says to work until I return. And I remember watching him walk away. There was a bridge, and he goes off. But then I realized, like, well, he said work until I return. So I better get working. I remember grabbing a rake and that's kind of where it ends. But it left me with this real peace and real like zeal of, yeah, I, I want to be found working when he returns. I want to be found serving when he returns. I want to be found doing what he told me to do, to be in full obedience when he returns. And this demon-possessed man, he was turned away. I don't get, you don't get to follow Jesus. Well, I don't get to go follow, but he's like, but you have a job here in the Decapolis to do. Go and tell everyone all that the Lord has done. And Jesus would one day return to the Decapolis. And likely the demon possessed man was there. And all these thousands of people came to hear Jesus teach, likely at the witness of this man. And so, you know, it's just that reminder for us that, you know, we're supposed to be working for the Lord, so that when he comes, or even when that time comes, that moment, that, that event that God intends to use you for. Winston Churchill had a saying about, you know, how sad it would be if that great moment came and we were either unwilling or unready for that time. That, that great moment, the thing that was supposed to be what God made us for, that he's planned to use us for something, and we found ourselves either 
not ready or unwilling. And so, unprepared, there we go. Unwilling or unprepared. I knew they were two unwords. And so, I, I don't want to be unwilling. I don't want to be unprepared. I just want to be serving and going hard for when Jesus comes back for me. So, something else to leave you guys with on top of the story of the demoniac legion. All right, have a great day. What are we doing tomorrow? Oh, is it the widow of Nain? Um, no, um, Jairus' daughter. So, We'll look at Jairus' daughter and Veronica tomorrow. Maybe her name was Veronica. We'll find out. See you guys then.